हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू ऑन माय चैनल इंजीनियरिंग मैथमेटिक्स डीजे गणित इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस सम प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ ट्रिगोनोमेट्रिक एंड हाइपरबोलिक फंक्शंस एंड सम एग्जांपल्स रिलेटेड टू दोज प्रॉपर्टीज सो वी स्टार्ट विथ दिस रिमार्क और नोट वी आर फैमिलियर विथ एनालिटिक फंक्शंस so this remark says that if f of z and g of z are analytic in a domain d then f of z plus g of z as well as f of z minus g of z that is sum and difference of these two functions and product of these two functions f of z into g of z are also analytic in a domain d this means if we have two functions which are analytic then their sum and their product are also analytic in the same domain d and now what about quotient of these two functions so the quotient f of z upon g of z is analytic in d if denominator function which is g of z is non zero at every point in that domain so if f of z and g of z are analytic in domain d then f of z upon g of z is analytic in d if g of z is non zero for each point in that domain d so using this remark we can discuss analyticity of this trigonometric functions tan z cot z sec z cos z so we know that uh, sin z and cos z are analytic everywhere so tan z can be written as sin z over cos z and uh, sin z and cos z are analytic everywhere so that uh, we have shown in uh, previous lectures so we can write sin z and cos z are analytic at each point in the complex plane at each point z in the complex plane so therefore this uh, tan z which is quotient of sin z and cos z will be analytic at those points at which cos z is not equal to 0 or tan z is not not analytic at those points at which cos z is Zero. So to determine those points, uh, we have to find out the values of z for which cos z is zero. So cos z is zero if and only if uh, we know that cos z can be written as negative of z minus pi by two, negative of sine of z minus pi by two. so if and only if uh, this uh, sin of z minus pi by 2 is zero because minus 1 is non zero this if and only if we can write shortly as i double f so cos z is zero if and only if sin of z minus pi by 2 is zero and we know that zeros of sin function are n pi n belongs to z we know that sin z is zero if and only if z is n pi here instead of z we have z minus pi by 2 so z minus pi by 2 must be equal to n pi this shows that z is nothing but pi by 2 plus n pi n is any integer so these are the points at which cos z becomes zero so at these points tan z is not analytic so tan z is analytic at every point 
which is different from these points. So therefore, tan z is analytic at every point z which is not equal to pi by 2 plus n pi and belongs to z. So similarly we can decide the number of points at which cot z is analytic. We know that cot z can be written as cos z over sin z both are under functions so cot z is not analytic at points z for which sin z is 0 and we know that sin z is 0 at these points z equal to n pi n belongs to z so cot z is analytic at every point which is different from n pi n belongs to z similarly we can decide the points of analyticity for sec z and cos x z. Now these are some identities which are true for complex uh, trigonometric functions also. Uh, we know that sin x is a periodic function if we consider sin as a real function. But for complex case also this property is true. So sine of z plus 2 pi equal to sine z for all z. This can be proved using that uh, property sine z1 plus z2 is sine z1 cos z2 plus cos z1 sine z2. So we are not proving these uh, properties. So this shows that sine z is a periodic function of period 2 pi. Similarly cos of z plus 2 pi is cos z for all z. So this shows that sin z and cos z are periodic functions of period 2 pi. Similarly, tan function is also periodic with period pi. Tan of z plus pi is tan z for all z. <coughs> so sin, cosine and tan functions are periodic if we consider them as a complex trigonometric functions. Now we consider this question, prove that conjugate of cos z is nothing but cosine of conjugate of z. So let us try to prove this. We start with left hand side, but before that we assume that z is x plus i y. So to find out conjugate of cos z, uh, we have to write down cos z in this form u plus iv where u is real part of cos z v is imaginary part of cos z so that we can decide the conjugate by replacing i by minus i so first we find out real and imaginary parts of cos z so let z be x plus i by any complex number then uh, we find out real and imaginary parts of cos z. I put z equal to x plus i y. Now I am using that identity cos alpha plus beta is cos alpha cos beta minus sin alpha sin beta. That property is true for complex numbers also. So using that property we can write this as cos x cos i y minus sin x sin i y. Now as we have proved in previous lecture that cos i y can be written as cos hyperbolic y and sin i y can be written as i sin hyperbolic y. So I am using this uh, property. cos i y is cos hyperbolic y and sin i y is i sin hyperbolic y. So from this uh, we can decide uh, or we can see that now cos z is written in terms of u plus i v. 
so this is real part of cos z this is imaginary part of cos z so it is written in that standard form u plus iv so now we can decide its conjugate conjugate of cos z is uh, obtained by replacing i by minus i in this uh, expression so cos x cos hyperbolic y as it is if i replace i by minus i i will have plus i times sin x sin hyperbolic y so i give this number one now i decide what is cosine of conjugate of z so that is right hand side so now we find out what is cosine of conjugate of z now z is x plus i y so conjugate of z is cos of x minus i y uh, this using the property we have cos x cos i y plus sin x sin i y So we are using the property of cosine of alpha minus beta is cos alpha cos beta plus sin alpha sin beta with alpha equal to x beta equal to i y. Now again I use that property here. This I can write as cos x cos hyperbolic y and here I can take i outside. Sin i y is i sin x sin i into y is i sin hyperbolic y and we give this number 2 and let us check whether both are equal or not so at the right hand side of 1 is cos x cos hyperbolic y which is same here and here i sin x sin hyperbolic y so here also i sin x sin hyperbolic y so from 1 and 2 uh, we obtain that conjugate of cos z is nothing but cosine of conjugate of z and because z is arbitrary this is true for all complex numbers z so these are some simple exercises related to this uh, elementary analytic functions here we have written that derivative of hyperbolic sin z is hyperbolic cos z and vice versa derivative of cos hyperbolic z is sin hyperbolic z so let us try to prove this so this we prove by definition by definition sin hyperbolic z is e raised to z minus e raised to minus z over 2 so if we take uh, derivative uh, we have d by dz of sin hyperbolic z is nothing but one half d by dz of e raised to z minus e raised to minus z and we know that derivative of exponential function is same so derivative of e raised to z is e raised to z minus e raised to minus z into minus 1 by chain rule so now this is nothing but 1 by 2 e raised to z here negative negative positive so we have e raised to z plus e raised to minus z over 2 which is nothing but cos hyperbolic z so what we obtain derivative of sin hyperbolic z is cos hyperbolic z similarly we can prove that derivative of cos hyperbolic z is sin hyperbolic z so by definition cos hyperbolic z is e raised to z plus e raised to minus z over 2 so taking derivative both sides with respect to z uh, here one half is constant now we write directly derivative of e raised to z is e raised to z and derivative of e raised to minus z is minus e raised to minus z 
and by definition this is nothing but sine hyperbolic z so derivative of sine hyperbolic z is cos hyperbolic z and derivative of cos hyperbolic z is sine hyperbolic z so we can see both the functions are differentiable everywhere and therefore they are analytic everywhere and therefore both the hyperbolic functions are entire function so this is about today's session in the next session we will do some more properties of this trigonometric and hyperbolic functions thank you very much